Uh, my name is Diana Echanique, uh, Dechanique. I have been drawing comics since I was 12, including erotica. I'm a first generation American from Ecuador. Um, I've been featured on Slipshine, Filthy Figments, and in the uh, erotic anthologies My Monster Boyfriend, Smut Peddler 2012, and Food Porn. We'll start with Celine. Um, my name is Celine Liu. Uh, I'm currently based out of Paris. Um, I've been working professionally as an illustrator since 2012, and I uh, do kind of political stuff, erotic stuff. Um, a lot of it self-published, and I'm very excited to be here. All right, good afternoon, y'all. Hey, uh, my name is Rachel Fogg, but I am under the username of Genova Silver. I draw filthy, filthy gutter butt porn. <laughs> <laughs> Just <laughs> gang bangs, blow you, I, I draw it. Um, I have <laughs> my uh, completely hardcore uh, webcomic, Rights of Spring, which I've been working on since 2009. I have uh, worked on, I'm working on a doujin right now. I'm currently working on a Voltron Yaoi doujin. Uh, yeah, don't, don't clap. I'm, going for, I'm, I'm doing a lot of sinful things, all right? Um, but nonetheless, uh, I've been, I'm self-taught. I did go to school for art, um, but for the most time I've been drawing um, self-published on my own and I work for a video games company, which I'm not gonna tell you which company I am because I'll get fired. So uh, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> no one should know. <laughs> Hi, I'm, I'm Shivana Sikdeo. I'm an illustrator that's currently working out of Jacksonville, Florida. I am a psychologist gone bad. I've gone completely rogue. I do mostly non-porn comics, but now and again, I accidentally draw a lot of Wang. Um, <laughs> it happens, it happens. I don't think I'm half as filthy as gutter butt, but uh, we're, we're gonna try today to get that close. Um, I am self-taught. I will be, uh, some of my work will be appearing in the Raw House uh, digital comics of the DeepEngines.com comics, and there will be eventually the horribly pretentious abstract erotica coming out fairly soon. Nice. All right. Um, I am Corey Michelle Handwerker. I uh, do work for Filthy Figments. I've been in the anthologies Purity and Food Porn. And um, I like to do queer porn, uh, especially porn that represents transgender people. Um, and I also got my start in uh, the Yowies, or BL Comics. The Yowies. Um, I have a long, long history with that. <laughs> <laughs> um, my name's Kendra Counts. Um, I'm up here representing sort of a partnership with me and Kate Sheldon, Kat Sheldon. Um, we go by Team KK. Uh, in the Yowie community, we went by Asikatsi and Wensleydale, but since we've crossed over doing um, just queer comics in general, um, in addition to Nick Cage fun and activity books, <laughs> which is completely unrelated, the streams don't cross, but... Uh, <laughs> oh man! <laughs> um, there are centerfolds, but they're tasteful. Uh, so we met in college and have been cranking out comics uh, since 2007, we work on a, an ongoing webcomic um, that has tentacles and poly relationships. Um, and it started out as like yaoi, but it's sort of uh, gone a little crazy. Uh, and that was Space Jinx, and we started that in 2010. So that's still ongoing. <laughs> and yeah, we like, we like tentacles. <laughs> so that's sort of uh, become our thing now. Um, so yeah. Excellent. Um, I would like to ask you all how you got started in erotica, and we can once again go down the line, but we'll start with Kendra and come this all way. Right. Uh, no pressure. Um, so again, uh, I, my buddy Kat and I had been friends. Um, it started out with wanting to draw fan art for an anime series, Chevalier Dayon, um, which we ended up with some fandom poly relationship stuff with that. Uh, and. From, the, from there, we were like kind of embarrassed about drawing the character, so we're like, well, let's create our own characters to practice drawing like porny things. And it kind of spiraled out of control. Um, we were posting on Y Gallery initially, uh, and then sort of became friends with some other artists through that that were encouraging, uh, submitted to one of the first anthologies that we were part of, Crown Royale. 
Um, and from there realized that like, yeah, we can make comics and met a lot of cool people and who also did comics and we were just like, we want to be part of this community and sort of uh, do what we like and sort of making what we want to see uh, since there was more of a lack of that like growing up. Um, so we're still doing it. So I've been drawing pornographic pictures since before I should have been allowed to draw pornographic pictures. <laughs> um, and then when I turned 18, I went to a porn store and I saw there were little manga, like porny mangas. And so I picked some up, shoved it in a bag, brought it home, opened it up, looked at it, was so horrified <laughs> that I ripped it up into tiny pieces and shoved it under some stuff in the bottom of a garbage bag. Um, do you remember what it was? Oh, I don't know the title, but there was a Money son. Money gravitation. There was a son and a mom, and I don't even... There was no corn cobs, right? What? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a step up from whatever this was. Um, but after that, um, I started getting into BL, into Yaoi, and um, I think what it was for me is that the, the porn that I could find online that had women in it was very much... It very much had, like, sex done to women, um, they were like the passive receivers of it, and it made me uncomfortable. And while BL has its, you know, its problems, <laughs> its problematic elements, um, I think it was a great escape for me because I didn't have to see a, a woman, as I identified at the time, have the, having sex done to her. So I could enjoy erotic work and erotic comics um, in kind of a, a safe way. And so that became my playground. Um, and since then, I've been trying to find ways to make the comics that are um, respectful and uh, meaningful to me um, and, and solve the, the problems I had with the porn that I saw when I was younger. Uh, well, a long, long time ago, I had access to both GeoCities and a modem. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Stumbled upon a Kurama and Hiei doujinshi. And it's been downhill ever since. Um, I honestly have, I mostly procure, I procured a lot of the doujinshi back in the day. That was kind of the gateway for me. I was very much into manga because it spoke to me in a way that like Cape Comics never really did. Um, and then I kind of went back burner for a while. I never really did any, I more digested them. And then at some point, for four years, I worked in an LGBT bookstore named Outright that was in Atlanta. Um, and that was kind of pivotal for me because I was exposed to not just erotica as something you could sell, but something that really represented people in lights, intimate lights that they wanted to be represented in. Um, I actually did the calculations yesterday. I think I sold about 4,200 pornographic mags in four years. So I've seen a lot of stuff, <laughs> but it's shit. only, it, I've seen, seen a lot of shit, but um, <laughs> it's only recently that I've kind of dabbled in sort of the aesthetics. I like very highly rendered, super aesthetic porn, just because for me, I don't really get off on looking at it. I just really like the aesthetic. So I wind up consuming things that are very abstract and that's kind of the way my work is going. And that leads us to here, where somehow I'm on a panel talking to y'all about dongs. <laughs> Lean on in there. I wish I could have a very lofty, uh, you know, equal representation in, in porn, but I, I am an equal opportunity smut peddler. I don't care necessarily about social issues. I just want to see some dicks and butts. I don't, I'm gonna be really honest with you. There's nothing bad about that. Please do not take that as offensive. It's just not, that's not what I do. Um, I first got my uh, hentai start when I was a wee child and I went to Pandora's Cube. Uh, if you were old enough to remember Pandora's Where were Cube. were parents? They, well, <laughs> shit. Uh, I went there because I was deep in Sailor Moon. Like, I was dick deep in Sailor Moon. And I, I wanted to get more Sailor Moon, because at the time, you know, it was, it was going off the air and blah, blah, blah. So uh, I procured, I found out that Sailor Moon had a movie. I was like, fuck yes, a movie? Fuck yes, I'm going to go watch it. And uh, it was Sailor Moon R. And I was like, yeah, it's great. But back in those days, for y'all young children, uh, we had to get VHS tapes, and it was 80 bucks for three nights. But what I did not know was 
the when I picked up the tape, it was re-recorded, and what was on there was the Blue Girl. <laughs> and so I was like this. It was that, and then what had happened was, what, let me explain, please. Let me. It was at the part where Sailor Moon was about to die, and I was like, she's gonna fight this shit. And then it cut. It went ahead and it abruptly cut to this bitch getting banged by tentacles. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and you know, instead of saying like, ew, no, I was like this. <laughs> The Usher song, I just want to take it nice and slow. That's what was happening in my mind. So at that point, I was like, I need to see more of this shit. So, you know, MTV had those weird anime, it was liquid television. And then it went on to Ninja Scroll. See, I'm old, y'all. I'm old as fuck. Um, <laughs> and I saw Ninja Scroll, and I'm like, this is cut. I don't want to see this shit. Let's go ahead and go back to Pandora's Cubes again. Pick the Ninja Scroll. And I saw this girl being ram jammed by this giant, and thus awakened my height differences kink. Uh, long story short, uh, at the wee tender age of eight, uh, I was a pervert. Uh, and there was no going back, and I, then Gundam Wing happened, and all just went oh, straight. God, <laughs> Good old one and two, I was just waiting down there. Um, but um, essentially, I just like drawing porn. I do, I, I like it, I like drawing dudes and chicks, I like dicks and dicks, I like titties and titties, I like that weird horse demon guy, and the I don't care what it is, I, I don't get any sexual gratification from it, I just like how it looks. Um, and so my comic, I started doing it, I'm sorry, this is gonna get profane, you might wanna leave, I'm sorry. Uh, I was in Shota for a long time. I was like, I like Shota. And I wasn't finding anything show that I liked. I'm like, why are these angel boys, cat boys, bunny boys? I don't want any of this shit. So when I started right spring, it was like, I want a bug and a flower. I want them to fuck. That was it. And my basis for that was looking at a lot of bondage fairies. A lot of bondage fairies and a lot of silky whip. And I was like, I want to do this. And so on Y Gallery, it exploded. I wasn't prepared. I was like, oh shit, these motherfuckers I actually like my terrible drawing. I better up my game up. And so it's kind of been like that the entire time. Um, I, I have met no resistance to what I draw. Um, I know it's not for everybody because I don't do show eye. I don't know what that is. That makes no sense to me. I just go straight to dicks, just zero to 100. Um, but I, un I understand how it can be a little intimidating for a lot of young people, a lot of women. It's not hentai and yaoi, they're not really friendly. And hentai is definitely not very female friendly. Uh, yaoi is what the fuck is yaoi at some times. Um, but I don't want to, I'm not here for any social commentary. If you want to see some flowers and insects having sex, uh, that's what this is. You know is. where to go. You know where to go. I mean, go. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, Celine. Celine. Man. Okay. Yeah, I'm, sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, man. That was really cool. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry I don't have any examples oh, no. of my erotic work. I just have my how to knit zine. <laughs> <laughs> but it's hot though. We, we have a nice a nice picture right here in the in the background right here. All right, yeah, that's what I do. I'm there sure you go. it's really hot to someone. You know? So I I would give anything to grow up with the the confidence that like you guys project at least. Like it really seems like you guys had a smoother ride into erotic comics than I did. Yeah. So, um, when I was really young, about eight, uh, I was exposed to the kind of mainstream pornography that really, really angry men make. And it was before I was, it was right at the time that I was discovering my own sense of uh, attraction. I was like starting, like, not even, but almost starting to like think about boys in this like really innocent way. And then I saw that and um, my brain kind of snapped because I was like, oh, this is what's going to be expected of me. This is what I'm going to encounter in my relationships. This is what the boys around me are gonna grow up watching. And then I'm gonna have sex with them. What's that gonna be like? And, um, it was really scary and I was really fucked up about it for a long time because uh, I couldn't stop thinking about it and like and I could I kept seeing the ways that it was creating my world for me before I got a chance to have any say about it or create my own kind of world within it um, so and I was also at the time because I, I draw I've always drawn 
I was drawing stuff to kind of deal with my emotions about it, and I was drawing kind of innocent but still kind of weird, like nude art and nudity, and and I don't know. Some people might have found it erotic. I was doing that in like the third grade, and um, my teachers would find it, and I just and like my parents, my parents were always really supportive, and they knew what I was going through. But I just, like, I got in trouble with the school. Like, I almost got kicked out. They had to fight to, like, keep me in school for it. And um, I just felt, like, this huge sense of shame because uh, it felt like later on, you know, I I kept reading comics and I found all this uh, really amazing, like, erotic comics, like, by Manara and Guido Crepax and... Um, I really admired the skill that went into it, but still, it was all just pornography being created by men, and I just felt like, like this wasn't allowed for me. I wasn't like, should I be doing this? This just seems weird, and I felt just a lot of shame. And I would just like any drawings that I actually managed to do, like I would uh, kind of suppress that instinct. I would just hide them, like I wouldn't let people see them. And it wasn't until um, I met my uh, now husband Eric. And I told him about like these feelings and these drawings that I kind of wanted to make. And he was like, oh, you should talk to my friend Deanna. She draws dicks all the time. (laughs) That's fine. And and thank God I met Deanna and she introduced me to all her filthy friends. And uh, it occurred to me that um, as long as I can, as I can shell out maybe like 200, 300 bucks, I can print about a hundred of, a hundred issues of whatever I want. (laughs) <laughs> and uh and so I just started like thinking about what what kind of um what what did I want to do what did I want to see and um for me uh especially after having dated boys and and had sex with a lot of boys um I felt like for one thing I felt like my pleasure female pleasure was this um this thing that women performed and it was something that had no inherent value in and of itself. It was always a performance. Um, and it felt like, and I talked to other women about this and, and it just seemed like we were all struggling to, um, like consent was this, instead of something that was enthusiastic and freely given, it was always a war of attrition. It was like, I'll let you do this if you won't make me do that. Um, so it just felt like, what before we thought of were just individual problems between me and our boyfriends, between us and our boyfriends, the more I talked to other women, the more I realized that this was a shared experience. And I wanted to make erotic comics about that, that sort of addressed that and gave an, al- an alternative perspective. And I wanted to explore vulnerability and see, see what we could make for ourselves in terms of like a genuine erotic experience that wasn't just a list of activities that we have to check off in a certain order and perform for each other because we saw it online. So I think that's where I'm at right now. (laughs) Excellent. Um, So with that background, what do you hope that your readers get out of your work? Um, We can go with Shivana. What do you hope that... Oh, okay. Um, (laughs) I'm awake. Yeah, I'm here. (laughs) Uh, Well, basically, I kind of also have the feeling that um, especially once I came of age and I was pretty much a late bloomer, um, uh, it, it is very performative and there's a, there is a lot of statistics on how many women suffer um, sexual dysfunction because they feel like they're being watched or they're performing for a camera because of the perspective that pornography forces on people um, and it completely throws expectations out of whack. Uh, so I kind of went into it knowing that that was a thing that affected me, uh, but having having said that, there were like kind of slices <laughs> of erotic things and uh, parts that express vulnerability to me, like where like legs meet and where the nape is, like just kind of dissecting it, it's almost like uh, a la carte, what things turned me on visually and what things interested me visually. So when I do a lot of erotic art, it's not very far back. I don't, for some of the some of the stuff that's coming out, it will be kind of far back because I didn't write the script. I was just drawing along with it, um, happily. But 
it, it is a lot of wide camera angles, but when I draw it, I really like up closes. And you get more of a sense of erotica than you do... It's more suggested. I rather just kind of suggest what's happening and let your brain go wherever it needs to go. Because God knows I don't know what you're thinking when you're looking at it. I know what I'm thinking. So the most I can do is kind of do a little bit of peekaboo. And um, I, think, I think that's very titillating to have those little gaps where you can fill in whatever you want and what your personality needs to get out of the comic. So yeah, it's, it's the stuff that I, I try to put out is very, I don't want to say eyes wide shut because I don't like how that was shot, but it, it's very suggestive without being, here's Dick, here's vagina, boop. There, that's how it works. <laughs> Um, yeah, so it, instead of having that, it's just like, well, where the seam is, or where, where that, that particular membrane is, or it's more about showing the emotion of the act through those little vignettes than it is about the actual act for me. So that's kind of what you're going to be seeing, but yeah, now and again, I'll probably, I mean, my friend will suck, suck me into, like, Spider-Man and Human oh, Torch. Yeah. And that happens. <laughs> that happens. So generally, you're not going to get that stuff unless you follow my secret Twitter. Um, <laughs> I ain't giving it out. But um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's mostly close-up stuff because I'm far more interested in the emotional content of the act, whether it is super intimacy between two people who know each other or three people who know each other or four people, whatever. Um, or people who just happen to be sharing that physical moment. But like, much like Celine, it, I was not impressed with a lot of the, the male-generated stuff because it just didn't include me. And it didn't care to include me or didn't care to figure out what the female was thinking at that time. Or what was she getting out of it? Who knows? Because they pulled away for the money shot. Like, she doesn't even get to come. It did not impress me. So that's what I've been doing with my time. Uh, how about you, Corey? Um, well, I think what I want people to get out of my erotic comics is I want them to be able to see people they identify with having fun, having sex. And it's, um, a couple of people have mentioned, you know, I don't get aroused by my own comics, and I, I, I know it's a little TMI, but I always go to the Tom of Finland quote, if I don't get a boner while I'm drawing it, I'm not doing it right. <laughs> uh, so I wanna, I wanna, I wanted to just draw stuff that you know I felt like I could be a part of, and that other people could feel like they were a part of. Um, and I feel like I really like, like found the thing I wanted to do when I started my Portal series, um, which is like a very light sci-fi uh, trans guy and his and his boyfriend um, solving long distance relationship stuff with, you know, interesting technology. Um, like portals that are about this big and only certain things can fit through them. Um, so, uh, so I want people to, to have fun, you know, like participating in it. I want, I want to make comics that, you know, you don't feel gross, you know, about having, having participated in. Mm -hmm. Now, that's not to say that I don't draw gross, guilty stuff <laughs> because you know, I'm pretty sure you, we all you do. get a weird idea <laughs> or, you know, you stumble across something and you don't know why it does it for you, you know, it's, it's your thing. But I, I, I love feeling like I'm making comics that uh, people can have fun with and can enjoy. And I like it when people are able to come up and say, you know, this is the first time I've had, I've been able to like see myself in, in pornography and, and like not feel gross and not feel like I've been objectified or stuff like that. And I know it sounds like wicked lofty, but you know, I've drawn tentacles too, so it's whatever. <laughs> we were both Gundam fans. We have no legs to stand on. Yeah. <laughs> uh, speaking of uh, Gundam, and I know uh, Kendra, you had mentioned something interesting about fandom and the, uh, the changes that have happened these last couple of, uh, couple of years regarding you know, the acceptance of certain media oh um in terms of like what was happening on twitter with yeah uh i guess like just talking about um when we're making the comics that we're making uh and the work that we're putting out i know it's been an issue like with 
especially with the social media and how easy it is to respond um, and just like fire off like comments on Twitter or Tumblr, um, the reblog generation or retweet generation, um, just the lack of distance between the creator and the audience. So um, even though like that's something that a lot of comic creators nowadays were sort of having to think about, um, I mean, we're fortunately with uh, the webcomic that Cad and I put out, uh, we don't get too many comments. So fortunately there hasn't been too much craziness, but we definitely have a lot of friends uh, and I know especially when you're involved in fandom, there's been like, there's the call out culture, which is great for actual problematic um, things that happen. Uh, but with a lot of, especially like younger fans, just not knowing the distinction of dogpiling and just saying everything's wrong, like not being able to draw the distinction between sort of fantasy and fictional characters and then real life situations. Uh, so, yeah, just sort of going on, like what Corey was saying, you know, that we all have things that, like, we're not sure why it might turn us on, and it sort of could be, like, dark or come from a weird place, and so we might draw it to sort of, like, explore this. Uh, that's something that, especially nowadays, you have to be really careful about, like, thinking about your audience, like, is this even worth posting, or, you know, will I have to watch, watch what happens, like, with the internet? Uh, and that's that's even been outside of like just uh, erotic comics in general, like just fandom. It's been kind of sobering to have to like think about. It's also changed a lot over the years because I know we were discussing like going to Yowie Con and being on Yowie, Yowie Gallery back in the day and it'd just be like anything goes. And nowadays like that sort of mentality like it's you. You always have to take a step back and think about what you're posting. So, if if I can add, you know, he said I'm not giving you my secret Twitter. Um, <laughs> a lot of us have secret Twitters, and you kind of have to earn that because we honestly don't know what if we can if we can post the stuff that you know turns us on without you know someone deciding that that ship that you drew is. Uh, means you're a pedophile or you know means that like oh you're erasing something and you know we want we want places like we used to have to be able to just like explore and experiment and 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 feel things and now we kind of we've locked those doors because we don't know what's going to happen to us real talk I don't give a fuck <laughs> <laughs> I mean I'm Go sorry I, I just I don't I <sighs> boy um, <laughs> I don't fucking care I, I, fandoms, I, 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 for fuck's sake, I'm in a Final Fantasy fandom. Just, just, it's a clusterfuck. Um, fandoms are a beast that eats himself. Um, I, I love them. I love being part of my fandoms. Uh, I love shipping. I don't get involved in shipping wars because I don't fucking care. If he's hot and he's hot, they're going to fuck. I don't care. I don't care. Um, but, but not to discredit anything that, that these fine fine, awesome panelists have said, they're absolutely right. Um, my stance has been, everything I draw is very bright, uh, it's very vivid, um, I don't conceal shit, um, I don't know how. I don't know how to be subtle. As you can clearly see, I don't know how to be subtle uh, with anything. Um, and my readers and my fans, they respect that. Um, like I said, when I started Rights of Spring, I was deep in the show does. I was deep, deep, deep. Chris Howdy. Hansen showed us. Really deep. Like, Leave the balls. But I, I had to, I had to, I, I decided like if I wanted to get serious and get this published, there are, there are laws uh, in different countries. And while, you know, in my mind, fancy free, that's cool and everything else like that, in order for me to get this printed and published, they gotta, I gotta age these motherfuckers. They can't be, you know, cusp age anymore. They gotta be legal. Um, and that was cool. I understood that. That was a kink that I had. It's not a kink that everybody else has. Some people don't like it. I respect that. I don't care. But at the same time, if I wanted to get more legitimate, have a writer reach for my audience, I would have to make concessions. And so when you start doing comics, um, and we start you know, playing in fandoms, uh, you kind of have to use your brain. Um, if you kind of, I don't want to say you want to self-censor yourself, even though it sounds kind of like what it is. Uh, if you feel in your heart that this ain't right, don't print it. 
Don't put it up online. If you say, oh, that's rose quartz, and she's like 2% less fat than how she is in the picture, I don't want to invoke that wrath of that fandom. Don't post it. If you do post it, you are going to incur the fat wrath of that fandom. You know what you step into. Um, and while I do yaoi and while I do hentai, uh, I, I, I'm fully aware of what I'm stepping into. I'm fully aware of what my audience is. I'm fully aware of what I draw and what, what that might incur. I haven't received any hate. Um, I, I have, I've received a lot of things about body positivity from my comment, which is a little odd. Uh, I ask you like, uh, but if it helps the fandom, if it helps people feel like, oh, they can look at Lily Bell and he's a little chubby and he's getting dicked, but it's really hot guy B, it's cool. I'm like, cool. I, that's cool too. I, it's not my intentions. Um, but I'm happy to help people through whatever situation they might feel for my comics. It's just not something that I set out to do. My mission when I make my comics is to let people know a little bit what's inside my head, uh, let little know what my story writing abilities is, and if they enjoy to take from it, cool. If they don't like it, that's also cool. Um, you don't have to go into comics with a goal. Um, and it's okay if you do have one. It's just make sure that it's right with you. You make sure that it's something that you want to do. Don't do it because you feel pressured that you have to do it. Like, gotta be PC. Or, it's something that you want to do. And at the same token, be ready. Be fucking ready because people will, they'll eviscerate you if you, if you back out of it. Uh, so that's pretty much it um, on my well, front. Plus, um, I feel like since erotica is so, it's such a personal, subjective thing, so much emotion is tied into it for a lot yes. of people that they do that knee-jerk reaction even though they may not necessarily do it for anything else because that is very much tied into their identity. Mm -hmm. And I think it's been super interesting to see so far how people play with privacy controls of setting up secret Twitters, not necessarily mm -hmm. to shut people out, but to give themselves the creative vacuum in which to kind of explore their kinks because kinks are weird. There's no standard for human sexuality or what turns you on. There's no standard. Mm -hmm. People are weird. Mm -hmm. People are always going to be weird. And I think um, that culture of kind of having a baseline to know what is good and what is bad kind of clashes with that reality. And I think, um, especially me especially, I know some people have the secret Twitters, not necessarily to be like, oh, I don't want my underage fans seeing this per se, but to have that room where they can be like, okay, I need to work this out. I need to draw this out. And I don't really want feedback because this is all about me at the moment. Mm -hmm. This is what's going on in my head and this is what I'm sorting out. It's my shit to shovel. I don't need other people with shovels right now. And then it might go on the public Twitter. But I think it's been very interesting to watch how social media and their privacy controls really influence what work you see and how people dialogue with it. Because God knows if I posted something on Facebook that was not work safe, it would be down in seconds. Whereas you get more leeway with Twitter, and then you get even more leeway with Tumblr, and then you even get... I haven't checked Y Gallery in years. It, it exploded. Uh, but they had a I, crack. But you can get away with a lot, yes. Yeah, I hope you they're back. You can definitely get away with a lot. But um, it does also mean different levels of discourse and different reactions to identity politics within the porn. Oh, yeah. So um, I've only ever made straight men uncomfortable with my work. Whoa. And um, <laughs> yeah. having not, not been involved in fandom, like, I can't speak to any of this experience. I'm just over here like, that must be so hard. Oh, man. <laughs> just like, I'm so glad I don't have to, like, think about this. I mean, like, the, the, the thing is, like, I've met so many wonderful people through my fandoms. My God, my home fandom, my Final Fantasy fandom, I've met, like, their family. And fandom is a wonderful thing. Um, and one of the things, I, I guess I can say that I have some sort of lofty goal, I lied, um, is that what I have learned about being a black bisexual smut peddler um, is that a lot of my fan base is young fangirls. Uh, fangirls that have surprised me at the age of 14. It's like, oh yeah, I read this part, like, how old are you? I'm like, I'm 14, like. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, right? But I'm like, is your parents here? Because I don't want to get thrown at this convention for selling you shit. But at the same time, I've met a great deal of young fangirls um, and girls of age, women folk, 
uh, people who identify themselves as women, um, that have expressed their gratitude towards me about being outspoken. Um, and uh, because most of the times when I was when I was starting the convention circuit, I was like a unicorn. In an artist alley, when I started, I was probably maybe one of three black people that was doing artwork in the artist alley, and maybe one of five women doing comics or comic work in there. And over the years, a wonderful thing has happened. I have seen more women, more people identifying themselves as women, more people of color, drawing comic books, making fandom stuff, doing all types of crazy awesome stuff. And it's really wonderful to see how that happened. I'm not saying that I'm like, you know, fucking Rosa Parks. I'm sitting there like, oh man, nothing like that. It's just that a lot of people are now coming up to comic creators uh, of erotica and uh, things of that nature. And they're expressing that you have that kink. I had that kink too. And I thought I was weird. And I'm like, well, baby, no. Listen, no. If you like Bukake, that's fine. <laughs> that's that's fine. That's that is wholesome. You are fine. Because I didn't have anybody to talk to. I didn't have anybody. I was like, if if I want to see Shishomaru and Inuyasha bang, who do I go to? Nobody. I can't go to no one about that. But now I have, you know, these young girls who, you know, binge watch all of Voltron one night come up to me and say, so about that Clance. <laughs> about that Clance. And, and I, I really like that. I really like that people are becoming more outspoken about the things that they like and things that might turn them on or things that might interest them instead of being so afraid that someone's going to judge them. My table is a no judgment zone. If you come to me and say, well, I just want to see Ram Jams, how... Do you think that's worth like, no, that's cool, bro. Come on, it's not cool. It's cool. I won't judge you on that. As long as you're not hurting any actual people or animals or doing any racist, crazy stuff, do whatever that makes you comfortable. So that's, that's my piece on that. So, um, thanks. That was cool. That? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I know. I was just fucked out. Um, <laughs> so, uh, uh, I've been hired to do work um, for websites that consider themselves pretty edgy, and um, they, uh, and this is, I sort of want to talk about um, why I don't work with men unless um, I really trust them and they trust me. Um, because, and I'm just saying this because I don't work with fandom, but this is what I do have to contribute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so um, I need to have control uh, over my work. Um, and that's, that's a wonderful thing about self-publishing. But I was approached uh, by a company, by a, a pretty famous website. I don't know if you've ever heard this little site called the AV Club. <laughs> um, and uh, and they, uh, my, my art director was a really great guy. Um, he seemed to get it, but he was working with three male editors. And um, the prompt was, uh, we want you to do a piece, um, a comic, uh, like a sequential art piece that talks about, uh, you know, work, work that really inspired you and formed you um, and contrast it with the work you do now. Um, and a lot of my work is political, so, uh, and like, I talked about like pornography and, and like erotic work and how that shaped me. And um, what I sent them, and they were not paying me very much, so I, it was just like a, just a thing to like, and, but they, my art director told me that I had like complete control, that it was totally up to me because they'd only ever asked, I guess, guys to do it before. I'm, no, they probably asked women to do it too, but like I don't think they were expecting anything really challenging. Um, and when I showed them the, the final thing, my art director was like, I need to run this by my editors. And what the editor said, because I was copied in like the whole email chain, so I got to read everything, um, was they didn't, un A, they didn't understand it, B, it made them uncomfortable, C, they thought it was simultaneously too dense, too uh, hard to understand, but also at the same time somehow too obvious. So they made me change it. They, I mean, 
I was able to get most of it in its original form up on the website, but I had to really censor it and take it out and I wasn't happy about it. My art director was very apologetic, but it wasn't really up to him. Even the censored version made so many guys angry. Um, uh, in really startling ways. Like I, I knew it would make them uncomfortable in, in some ways, but the, the range of reactions was just stunning to me, the, the fragility on display. Um, and I posted the uncensored thing up on my website. And that's, it's been like two or three years uh, since that went up. And I still get women coming up to me saying, when I read that comic, like everything clicked into place for me. I understood everything. It was like you were seeing inside my life. It, I have never ever talked to a woman who read it who said I didn't understand it or this didn't apply to me. But it got no recognition, no acclaim, nothing. Um, and I think about that when uh, male erotic artists complain about being censored. Um, <laughs> Or, or, are, or complain that people are asking them to think about their work. Um, and I think about that when men still come up to me at conventions and try to talk to me about my work and get really offended when I tell them that, you know, it's fine if you like my work. Like, I'm totally happy if you read it and get something out of it and are turned on by it. Yes, great. Um, but my audience is other women. Um, I make work for other women, um, and I need to be able to make it without having to think about what men think about it. Um, because, I don't know if you've noticed, but women talk to each other differently when men leave the room. And I need to be able to make work in that context. Mm -hmm. um, Shivana, have you experienced any challenges in, you, in your work? Um, you know, not I can't really I can't really say that I have, but it's not necessarily because um, I won't. I I definitely um, I just I'm not really known as an erotic artist. So when people approach my work, they generally find the stuff that isn't porn, um, and then they find stuff later. And by then, my their opinion of me has already been formed. So they kind of slot it nicely into their my online identity. Um, what up, Tintin? There you go. <laughs> we'll talk about that later. <laughs> um, but I, I haven't really received any pushback, but I think it's because most of the stuff that I put online isn't very challenging mm -hmm. to male identity. Um, not because I don't think it should be challenged. I think it should, and I think most of the erotica that I am interested in is not informed by that perspective. That's everywhere. You can get, you can get, like, you get flashers in the park for free. Like, mm -hmm. it's not, it's I'm not something that um, I even consider. I don't even consider what the male audience might want. I do consider what a female audience might want because I feel like that's the audience I'm part of, and also because of a female or, and or queer audience, they're the audience that gets the most abuse in mainstream stuff. It's like, I don't want to add to that, that burden. I don't want to flip through my work and suddenly realize, oh God, I've just been making somebody's life miserable. I just wanted to draw porn, and now I've just completely ruined their day. But um, yeah, like most of the stuff that I do is more like, playful because my actual body of work is a lot more thoughtful and a lot more like dissections of de depression and things about politics and things about um you know mental health and and uh gender issues that kind of thing is what i do with my normal life normal life um so this is my playground this is where i'm relaxing and just kind of taking my brain off the hook and figuring out, you know, what things I find beautiful to look at. And erotica kind of gives you that margin where you can kind of stretch out. There's not the same boundaries. You don't have to worry about the same kind of um, message you're putting out because it's so deeply personal. Mm -hmm. And 
I can't say I've gotten hate for anything. So far, most of the time, people kind of go, well, I did not know you were into that. Why didn't you tell me? <laughs> That's what I get. Um, I await the day where I make a lot of men angry. Bring it on, Holmes. <laughs> I'm not here to, like, this stuff is not supposed to be challenging because I'm not interested in doing that with this stuff. But um, it'll happen. It'll probably happen at some point. It just, it all matters how relaxed I'm feeling and what I'm doing with it. It's all about, you know, the, the boundaries that I'm presenting. And at the moment, stuff like, you know, slices of sort of maybe genitals is not really going to piss anyone off. And I realize that, but, you know, I'm honestly not in it. I piss people off with my regular work. So it's like, this is just vacation for me. <laughs> and I'm glad people seem to be receptive to it. I wonder if part of the difference is just the context in which our art is presented. Like, if you're drawing fandom, it's sort of in this, um, it's like cordoned off. Uh, whereas if you're trying to make um, work that blends erotica with just sort of general stuff that um, people who are not your audience may come across like in without like actually searching it out, then you you have a lot more cross pollination, and um, and that can get tricky. Oddly enough, uh, what I've what I've discovered, I don't think I've received any hate. I've had uh, men challenge me about porn, and that's always a delight. <laughs> that's always I live for it. This is not going to be a man hating sort of situation because I love men. I love dicks. Um, I love women too. Bye. Um, but most of the time, most of the guys who I who've challenged me, um, they challenged me because. They're, they're really not used to seeing uh, a female comic artist do blatant porn. Um, there's, a, there's, there's a fine line between erotica and porn. I, I, I just don't do erotica. I just, I, I wish, I wish, God, I wish I could. Um, but I like porn. I like it so much. So when a guy comes up and they say, oh, hey, you did, you know, Team Dark, does gender swap humanized sonic porn that I saw on the internet way back, and I want to see blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, well, I'm glad you brought that out in issue 27, blah, blah. And I, I will confront with them. And I usually gain fans that way because I'm not trying to make you feel like ass or anything else like that. Um, but I suppose in terms of from what I usually draw, um, which is sexy most of the time, 95% of the time, 5% of sleeping, is that I am very vain and selfish in my art. Um, I like MILFs, so all my women will have curves. Um, I don't know how to draw slender women. Um, not saying that they're not attractive, I just don't know how to draw them because I've been drawing MILFs for so long. Um, that's a failing on my part. Um, yeah. But I've met people who who like MILFs too, um, or who like Barra. And they're like, hey, I, I like the Barra, you like the Barra, we like the Barra. Um, I'm putting that in a shirt. I like the <laughs> like, <laughs> We like the Barra, we like the Barra. Um, but I, I like connecting. I don't really try to set out to be controversial. I'm not trying to do that. I like meeting people and connecting people, and if I could connect through porn, that's awesome. And I love getting fan mail from people saying, I've masturbated to your comic. That's the best. That's like, and it's a guy, and I'm like, as long as you're not jerking off in front of me, I mean, granted, I am a voyeur, but not at a convention, homes. We can't be doing that at a table. <laughs> That's fine, I'm, and I, I, I love getting those comments. I love getting people like, well, I felt this way and I felt this way, I, I love that. Um, so that's kind of the reason why I guess I don't aim to do a lot of political or controversial stuff. That may make me not as challenging or awesome in that regards, and that's cool too. I'm a simple woman, so, um, but I do like putting themes in my comic um, about about racism, classism. Um, I got a couple of gender issues that are in the comic, but they're not some that's really, you know, not fully formed uh, in the comic, which is unfortunate. But I'm trying to get that, trying to improve that as as I write and go on. However, I had found a lot of freedom in fan fiction. 
uh, because my artwork, God bless me, I am trying to improve every day I breathe, I am more proficient in my fan fiction. Um, and I like getting comments of people crying. I have a tear machine. And if you tell me you cried, I'm like, good. I ain't telling you that. <laughs> good. <laughs> good. I want you to cry. Um, and, and that's something that I like to do. I like doing that. So I... Uh, long story short, too late, is that I really, I really like connecting. Um, I haven't found any pushback from guys. I haven't found any pushback from girls. I hope to never get any pushback because I I'll go zero to 100. I'm not going to have any filter. I'm just going to, I'm going to lay you out. I'm going to clap back. I don't know what to do if you come at me with something on there. Um, but that's kind of how I operate when I do my comics. I'm like, Fuck you, fuck me, let's go. <laughs> I'm sorry. It, it gives me so much hope, though, that I live in a world where there can be women erotic artists who don't give a fuck about social issues. Don't give a fuck. Like, <laughs> don't. Because God knows, like, I, what men, what male erotic com artists, like, feel pressure to make their, their porn political. I don't think there's a... Uh, you know? Like, Kendra? the whole... Yeah. I was just going to like talk about the distinction between like doing the erotic comics and doing porn comics mm -hmm. like cuz i use both kind of interchangeably and maybe that's just me but because my comic partner and i are like not really like we're just doing it from our perspective we're doing uh, our comics for fun like it's what we want to see we're not really putting anything serious in it like we can uh, enjoy and appreciate like more serious media. Um, but when we're doing our own thing, we're just like silly. So it's just like, this sounds hilarious. Let's just do that. <laughs> so it's like, you know, I'll say smutty comic. I'll say I work on like porn comics. I do erotic comics if I'm trying to sound fancy. But and I think I, that's what it. Is. I think that's exactly what it is. I think you know when you think of when you think of porn, you think of 1970s deep throat. You know, bounce. I came to fix your pipes. You think of, that's kind of <laughs> you know you kind you kind of get that you know uh, you get that kind when you get erotica it sounds like you know not bodice rippers but, you know more like you know like you know and then he takes her in the back and he strokes her thigh or call it's something more fanciful at least to me I don't I do not know I don't live in that world mine's like you know hey listen just Sonic just bend him over and just <laughs> just. Just do to do. I don't, and I think that's kind of what I think might be the difference to me personally. That's my own personal well, hard Wikipedia. I know it's just been like a challenge yeah. uh, with more that there's no like consistency. Oh, there so is. like it's it makes it very difficult to find like a printer. It makes it very difficult to sell gotcha. your stuff online. Like find an online storefront. Even Kickstarter, even though they've been very good for a lot of the independent mm -hmm. uh, erotic comics labels, they can still, at the end of the day, deem something as too pornographic or like vulgar. Like a lot of websites will just be like, we can take this down if we deem it vulgar, and there's like no description. So it's been, uh, I know that's been a challenge. Definitely, for... especially with PayPal. Yeah, yeah exactly. Oh, a, lot of, a lot of um, sex workers also have problems with yes. PayPal because mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. the, the, um, the censorship and whatnot with, with that, um, especially coming from a standpoint of academia, because God knows that was my world forever. Um, it's very much down to linguistics, what things in a paper are referred to as what, because the vernacular is gonna be different in a study and or a, a paper about erotica. Then it is, nobody's really gonna call it porn or they'll call it pornography because there's a different standard of language, and I find that it does trickle down from like academia and um, like think pieces about it, all the way down to the person actually just making the stuff because hell, it's hot. Who will use the terms differently because they mean something to them personally different. That the, the vernacular is very much insular, as opposed to when I was writing papers for my abnormal psych class. And I did write a 50-page paper, this is my claim to fame at UMaine, a 50-page paper about the homoeroticism of um, Will Graham getting stabbed by Hannibal Lecter. <laughs> right? Good times. Right? Especially in Red Hannibal. Dragon. But the language for that was completely different and deeply unsexy. 
<laughs> Whereas if somebody wrote that on AO3, it's going to sound a lot different, and they're going to call it something different because to them, it's being processed and and you know eaten differently. <laughs> uh, it was a good paper. I got an A plus. Y'all should be proud of me. Excellent. So, well played, man. Yeah. Uh, so thank you, everybody. We we did run over, but uh, oh goddamn. <laughs> Um, anybody who can stay, because I know some of us have to close tables, uh, can stay if anybody has questions. Oh, yeah. or we should also maybe just mention what table we're at in case people want to check us out real yeah. quick. Yeah, um, there were some erotica catalogs going around. Um, I apologize that I didn't bring totally <laughs> enough. Um, I bought a shoe. But if you want to come down the line, starting with Kendra, where are we at? Sure. Uh, the guy? Team KK, uh, my... Our comics, Space Jinx and Other Tentacles, along with Nick Cage, Fun and Activity Books, and Can You Smell What the Rock is Cooking, uh, Recipe Book, oh, yeah, and Fanzine, um, along with uh, Beautiful The Rock Prints. Um, anyway, all that's at table C, like C3PO. <laughs> I'm uh, Corey Michelle, and I've got some Portals comics at table E14. Uh, I am at table W82. That's right next to Noel Stevenson, so you could probably find me pretty easily. Um, there are not any porn comics. I hope you stop by to say hi anyways. Um, but there will be the abstract erotica comic coming out on my Gumroad, so definitely if you can at least pick up a business card to find out where that is, that would be pretty awesome. Uh, I, I'm a shameless hobo. I have no table. Uh, Find her out in the back alley. <laughs> I, 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 you know, but you're not wrong. But I got some. I got some. I mean, nice. I mean, you know, I got, I got some of that fire. I got some of that fire, that kick. Um, no, I do not. Unfortunately, SPEC didn't like me. Guilt trip, you guys. Uh, but that's next year. Uh, but I do have some comics with me. Uh, if you'd like to procure some, I'm not going anywhere. I'm standing here and keeping the seat warm and drinking all y'all water. So. You know. <laughs> uh, I am sharing a table with DNA Kanique at um, M11. I have my mother comic that has some porn in it, and I have my market day print and some filthy stickers. All right, thank you. Um, did any, like, are you? I can stick around. I'm, I'm, I'm here. I'm here. I right, right, the question. Yeah, if anybody had any questions or anything, now's the time. Throw rocks at me. That's cool. Yeah. Shame. Yeah, cool. You know, like, like that is cool too. Awesome. Like no, it's like, no. no, it's cool. All right. All right. Thanks for coming, yeah. everybody. Thank you guys. Thank you. Go make some smut. Make me proud. <laughs>